Hello everybody and welcome to another Jack Law update. Well, I know that um, some of you were, are expecting to see a new knife revealed today. But unfortunately, it didn't go according to plan. Uh, I wasn't happy with the outcome. Uh, I'm going to make a few changes to it. And so just as soon as that's ready, I'll, um, I'll show you. Uh, it's a work in progress at the moment. But here's an update for you uh, where I'm at at the moment. I've got three completed knives here. I'll tell you a little bit about these knives. Um, we'll start off uh, with Paul's knife. Uh, I do hasten to add that at the moment. The knives taking me a little longer to build than I anticipated because I have added additional processes to the build of these knives to make them better. Uh, as I say, I'm stabilising with this contraption here. Uh, I mean, it takes me, including time for the resin to dry. Uh, you know, you've got to work a week ahead on all the scales. Uh, so I start off with, uh, with, with Paul's knife. Uh, I'm starting to lengthen the, the handles. I haven't done it on all these knives, but I'm going to start lengthening the, uh, the, the fire steel handles. I think it makes them just look a bit better. Um, logo stamped up there, but on the future knives, which we'll see in a minute, I'm stamping it down here now. Simple reason being that uh, when I wet form the sheath, it um, stretches the logo and it just the impression isn't as sharp. So anyway, this is the last sheath I think to be stamped there. Uh, Paul's gone for uh, a, a right hand dangler sheaf or uh, I think it's also called a Scandinavian style sheaf with the uh, the poppers which are allowed to be detached and uh, put that through the belt there so that's uh, a dangler knife itself is stabilised oak scales with black fibre liners and my own um, mosaic pins covered in oil at the moment my own uh, homemade mosaic pins That's Paul's knife. Keith's knife, you've seen that in the previous video. I finished the sheath off now, Keith. I have to wait a little while for it to dry, but I stamped the logo down there this time. As you can see, it's much better quality. Uh, it's not, the lever hasn't stretched. So uh, I'm going to do that on all of them from now on. Lanyard holes there. Um, matching fire steel. It's particularly interesting wood this. Uh, curly cover. And I like this wood. In fact I'm inclined to, uh, I've got enough to make another knife. I might make one for myself with this wood interesting grain patterns in it again black liners uh, handmade mosaic pins very nice uh, and then we come to uh, Jesse's knife Jess is a left-hander, a left-hand sheaf, Scandinavian um, dangler attachment, matching fire steel, again the lanyard holes there. Now Jesse asked me for um, make the scales a bit chunkier. So, uh, well, you can tell 
on the wet forming of the sheaf look I don't know, I've made them as chunky as I dare I'm not sure what this wood's called uh, it's uh, very well patterned wood uh, it was in places soft quite soft when I cut into it so uh, again I had to stabilize the wood um, and yeah it's come out quite nice actually um, yeah, you can see wait for the camera to focus if it will focus logo stamped into the blade uh, a good even grind and the actual uh, scales themselves I think they're 26 mil across there So that's your knife, uh, Jesse. Just fill the hand quite nicely, actually. And on to um, Sharon's knife. Sharon's going to have a uh, Scandinavian dangler attachment as well um, stamped in there, this sheaf isn't finished yet got to put the holes in there yet as well uh, oh, before I go on, Keith I put the uh, the dangler on yours as well, I know you didn't order it but if you don't want the dangler you can always cut through a D-ring and take it off but it's a useful thing to have I think, I think you'll appreciate that Sharon's knife is different to all the others. Um, she opted for stainless steel. There's the uh, the fire steel, and I, I must admit I was full of trepidation when I started this knife build because I've never used steel furniture before and much harder material than brass. And I was wondering if I would um, wash the wood away before the brass as I was grinding, polishing, etc. But it's come out okay. I've made the scales slightly thinner to suit a female hand. Um, the wood I believe is called black heart. Uh, it's incredibly tough wood. In fact, I uh, my bandsaw blade was was pretty well used anyway. But um, this wood finished the bandsaw blade off in no time at all. So pretty hard wood. Uh, it came, the wood came sealed in wax. Um, and so I cut the cut into it, and I obviously immediately realised the wood wasn't um, stabilised at all or anything like that. Uh, and so I tested it, and there was quite a bit of moisture still in that wood. So uh, I went through the same procedure that I go through with all my wooden scales and I um, I uh, dried the wood out uh, using a microwave and then um, carefully I hastened to add uh, and then I stabilised them in resin using the vacuum pump uh, so I'm pretty confident that these are not going to move anywhere and it's, uh, again it's beautiful uh, finished woods really come up nice uh, good even grinds again plain steel pins the uh, the, the back lanyard tube I had to go to Birmingham uh, I was going to Birmingham anyway to get bits and pieces uh, that's stainless steel and these two pins here were given to me uh, well, a bar section was given to me um, by a fellow YouTuber uh, Quality Jackson uh, so um, I used those steel stock, they're just the right size uh, to go through. Uh, so that black line is again. 
So that's uh, that's your knife, uh, Sharon. That'll be ready to uh, send out to you um, early next week. Soon, um, and I've also got um, high nose knife. I know your knife is there uh, in the process of having its hands put on, which I'll do tomorrow. Um, all being well, this should be ready Wednesday next week. Um, I'm working also the start of work on uh, Steve uh, Z back. There's one for you, Steve. That that'll be yours when it's uh, all finished. I mean, uh, it's been heat treated. Final grinds put on. Uh, just waiting for the scales. That's your sheath there. In the process of uh, of being made. Quick update for Patrick. That's. Uh, Terra firma knives, terra firma knives, he's just, just started to uh, have a go at knife making himself and he's uh, asking me a few uh, questions and one of the problems he's having is getting uh, cleaning out the tight internal radii Now I've got this machine here uh, which is becoming indispensable as time goes by and uh, with this machine it has these uh, spindles which rotate and as they rotate they also oscillate I'm going to turn it on, you'll have to see it. And I'm also able to remove the spindle. And I've got different diameters, for example, there's a Obviously I've got to remove that to match. Um, I think it's that one there, is it? That would be the base for that one, and then that would simply go on there. And again, that would give me a, a tighter radius. Um, invaluable machine. Uh, before we had this machine, I used to... Um, I converted this cheap Clark grinder to a type of bobbin grinder and I used to grind on this uh, wheel here but I have to be careful because the wheel itself is um, craned so I have to watch how I did that um, I'll give you a quick tour of the uh, the machines in the workshop Patrick and anybody else who's interested you can see uh, what I've got so far here I'll start at the main grinder itself here's the main grinder um, this is probably the actual heart of the Jack Law workshop. Um, this is a homemade uh, grinder which uh, John, Remy John, made for me. Uh, without this machine, I would be um, unemployed, I guess, really. Uh, always good to have a good bright light to work by. I've got lots of natural light all around as well. Uh, I use a one horsepower single phase motor with pulleys so I can uh, get different speeds. This wheel uh, was made by uh, Adam Savage, a crazy saint on YouTube. Adam's also a knife maker, a very highly skilled individual. Uh, I can pull that wheel out. I've got another wheel which John's given me, and I've also got a platen arrangement, so I can put the platen on. Um, and then I use the platen together with a table. I can tilt the platen to get the angles I want for my, for my bevels, uh, and that's um, that's how I grind in profile the the, uh, the knives. I've also got these wheels here that I can use for for internal radii. Uh, so fantastic machine, uh, very robust. Never gonna well if it does wear out, all these bits and pieces are all easily obtainable and replaceable. So I'm fairly independent, I don't have to rely upon any engineering company, I can fix it all myself. Uh, so that's the grinder, the main grinder here. Next to the main grinder I've got my two pillar drills. This is the one I mainly use 
uh, for my uh, drilling of the steel uh, and also for um, drilling the wood, the wooden handles. Uh, I vary the speed obviously for whatever process I'm doing. Next to it is a smaller, um, a smaller drill, uh, pillar drill, which I use for um, for drilling my leather. And I've got a one and a half mil drill in here at the moment. Next to that, most all the, the mess are my two vices. Got a nice Irwin two ton uh, bench vice there, uh, and a smaller. Um, Vice I picked up from one of the supermarkets. It, this actually rotates, there's an anvil on the back, but it's not very good. But uh, useful to have the vices, in, uh, indispensable really. Uh, clamp a drill in there, and now you've got a flat wheel that I find useful uh, for uh, partial finishing off uh, of some of the profiles. Uh, so that's my two um, vices. This is an invaluable machine, they're not that expensive. Um, the Clark Lidisher or wood sander. I use it for uh, for sanding all the wooden handles, um, preparing the scales, etc. It's got uh, on the side it's got a rotary disc which I use for chamfering the front of the bevels on the uh, on the handles. And here uh, there's a good old um, Excelsior uh, half horsepower bench grinder which I use for sharpening the, uh, my, my drill bits and uh, a bit of polishing as well from time to time. Well you've already seen the uh, disc, uh, sorry the uh, bobbin uh, sander here. And that, that's the cheap uh, Clark grinder that I've uh, adapted, I'd say, for a bobbin use as well. And very useful, you know, if you, if you want to get in there and do those internal curves like that. This is the Paragon 14D Knife Maker's Kiln. Uh, very stable uh, furnace and uh, controlled with a thermocouple on the inside. Uh, it's only a small kiln, 14 inches deep, and uh, it will uh, it will heat treat five blades at a time. Um, actually, when I do the heat treats, I, uh, I I will actually heat and quench two blades at a time because with O1 tool steel, there's no great requirement to leave it in there any sort of high heat for any length of time. You just want to thoroughly soak it through at the critical temperature, which is what I do. Um, and then it goes into quench, but before I quench, uh, which you don't see which is out of shot, and to be honest with you, you get a feel for it when you've done a, a few blades, and I've done over 150 knives now, but down there is a dust extractor, and um, if I'm a bit unsure if I've reached critical temperature or not, I'll pull the blade out, and I've got a magnet. And so, uh, just test to see if you've got any uh, magnetism there. And if you have, obviously you haven't um, heated it to a high enough temperature for long enough. So it's back into the kiln until it's non-magnetic. But it's, as I say, it's not in the kiln at that temperature for long. It doesn't need to be. Not for O1 tool steel. And then uh, down there is an ammunition box which contains my oil. Good thing with the kiln also, it's incredibly stable. Uh, once uh, you've learnt to, to drive it properly and uh, set it on the correct uh, ramps uh, for, for heating, it'll, uh, it'll, uh, it'll remain very stable. Plus or minus one degree centigrade. Uh, so if, if I select say 240, 245 centigrade for my um, temper cycle, I can be sure that it'll uh, stay rock steady plus or minus one degree of whatever I want to achieve. I use Cromwell tall steel and I, uh, I use the Cromwell charts for all my uh, heat treats and tempering and um, 
So 240 to 250 centigrade is uh, going to bring out around about a 58 Rockwell. Next to the kill is my uh, floor standing bench saw. Sorry, uh, floor standing band saw I should say. Uh, again a very invaluable tool. Uh, something which you uh, would struggle if you didn't have and I use that uh, mate well for all the uh, the sawing of the scales, cutting out the profile of the scales, um, sawing of the handles for the fire steels. Uh, great bit of kit that. Not not overly expensive, uh, but again invaluable. In the far corner here is uh, my uh, metal cutting band saw. Uh, which I use to, uh, to roughly cut out the profiles and you see a piece of steel that I'm working on shortly. This is uh, got the, um, I don't know if you're going to see that or not, maybe you can just see etched in, scribed into the, the blue, the outline of the jack law knife. Well I'll cut that roughly out using the metal cutting band saw. Uh, it's much quieter than, a, than, a, than, a, than, a, than a, an angle grinder and uh, fairly accurate. Um, again an invaluable tool. Next to that is my old fly press. And I got this initially for, uh, for stamping the logos. Um, but it's a useful uh, tool to have uh, in the workshop anyway. Uh, next to that down here. Is the anvil that my my friend Brummy John gave me. And uh, I'll either use the fly press for stamping the blades and sometimes I'll um, use a hammer. Not a heavy hammer like that I hasten to add. don't need a heavy hammer, but I'll uh, set the punch, you can see it sounded very dead, that's because there's a huge mass of iron there, uh, and that's what you want when you're, uh, when you're punching. This here is my stamp, and then what, what I'll do, I'll jig up uh, if you can imagine that being my blade, I'll dig up with that. I'll lift that up obviously, just for demonstration purposes. But that, what that, that V block does, it holds my stamp truly vertical. So all I've got to do then is just And that will have stamped into the uh, the steel. You can't see it very good there, but that's how I stamp the blades. Here's another little machine I use. Uh, be quite honest with you, it's a cheap and nasty thing. Uh, I don't know how long it will last. Uh, it's a work zone from uh, one, I think it's Aldi uh, grinder, and I've put these these uh, polishing noses onto it so all I've got to do to change them off is just do that, take them off, put them on again and then turn the machine on but as I say it's not a very good machine, I can take them off again change mops as easy as that. And there is some play in that, so uh, naff machine really, but it does the job. And finally over here buried under the crud, I've got a little arbor press, half ton arbor press that I use for my lever stamp, putting my logo into the lever. 
And next to it, a uh, little um, press with um, interchangeable dies that I use for pop rivets, rivets and studs and that sort of thing, press studs. It puts them in very, very square and accurate. Uh, and, again, and again in the background there, if you can see that, my vacuum pump. And that is my humble workshop. With these tools I'm able to produce my knives. And it's all crammed into one single garage. Uh, but you know, it's all I need really. So Patrick, I hope that's been of use to you. Um, thanks for watching everybody and uh, see you in the next video and remember Yes. And remember, stay sharp.